on the air for another episode. And because of comments that were left on the last video, I just want to say for the record, the brown diamond wheel that I was using, I bought strictly for carbide because um, I wanted to, this is the Harbor Freight carbide set, but real cheap, I think it was $5. I wanted to play with these guys and see if I can um, actually make cutters out of it, some kind of tool. So the brown wheels for that, and I was just trying it on high speed steel. Um, the other wheel that you saw, the diamond one, is an experiment just to see what it's going to do. But high speed steel was best and fastest ground on the stone. So. Uh, next, uh, what do I want to do? Oh, yeah. Um, because of helping a lot of people here, um, new guys, and the mill that I was talking about before, the bug bit again, and I'm starting to look for a bigger mill. And um, what I want is a little more Y travel, and I want more clearance vertically. But all the mills that I'm looking at, um, like the next bigger one, the grizzly one or whatever. The problem is the head is dead weight and it's moved with a crank and the quill only moves two, maybe three inches tops. And I like the ability to use the quill handle and go completely up and down. Plus on this mill I've got 10 inches of clearance and on the bigger ones I only see eight inches in the spec. So. That's just some kind of heads up on what I want. The problems that I keep winding up in is I don't have enough of clearance because I've got boring heads here, and you just some jobs I just can't do, can't make it. Um, the other one is I keep winding up maxed out on the Y, and I know LMS sells a bigger base that I can extend it, and I can always move the vice around to get the job done, but. I wish there was a bigger mill that fulfilled that ticket. So, uh, okay. And next, I want to thank Emma's spare room for turning me on to the sign bar and checking angle blocks. Uh, I don't know when that may have actually happened on its own. So, in this video, I'm going to show I picked up a sign bar. I'm going to show the sign bar, checking it out, and so on, and checking out some angle blocks here. But when editing it, I realized I didn't account for the error in the sign bar. In other words, if the sign bar isn't flat, one end's lower, and you put an angle block on it, you need to add the error to whatever you're measuring to really tell where your angle block is. Um, the other thing is the specification was saying for these angle blocks it's plus or minus 20 seconds. So I'm figuring where do you start measuring that and I'm realizing you can start at either end. You start here, the other end can go up or down 20 seconds, which according to the LMS calculator for a one degree is four, th four tenths. So that's a lot of movement. You go up four tenths or down four tenths. It's almost a thousandth worth of movement. And then I started thinking, I, you run the calculator on, I think it was like 10 degrees or something, and the error gets bigger. And I'm thinking 20 degrees is 20 degrees. No matter what angle block you're at, or 20 seconds is 20 seconds. So I think there's rounding error or something in the LMS calculator. So I don't know what the real thing is, but in any case, I went through all the angle blocks and they're all well within spec, so I was lucky on that. So first I'm going to show, um, I showed in the last, uh, the last video of the video before, making the grinder, playing with that snap-on drill bit sharpener. I successfully sharpened three drill bits back to, they act like factory, they came out of the factory. So the first little piece, I'm just going to show how I actually did it, kind of the procedure or whatever. And then I'm going to show all the sign bar work. So I hope you guys get something out of it.
Alright, here's the setup so far for it. Like I said, I've had this guy probably bought it 35, 40 years ago. Never used it because I never had a grinder that I could, wanted to bolt down and then bolt this down. So with this diamond wheel, followed their instructions two and a quarter inches out from the face of it. Um, trying to understand this little flute rest. I wound up figuring out that you wanted to just barely poke up so that when you put a bit in there and you rotate it it rests on the very edge of the flute. And then the other important thing is to read the instructions because <laughs> they tell you uh, for this particular angle you need to be poking out from the tip to the rest 50% of the diameter of whatever you're working with. So I successfully did two um, drill bits. Boy, I wish you could see them because this is, it's like a mirror finish. It's just perfect on it. This one wouldn't drill uh, stainless and now goes right into stainless. I didn't bother testing this one other than on aluminum and it did the job on it too and boy you can feel them they are really sharp and it's got the right relief angle everything so this whole setup is successful and what I wind up doing is yeah I'll set, I'll set the nut for about a sixteenth of an inch that I'm going to take off uh, is that what I did yeah I think it was about uh, about half, 30 second of an inch, I put this as a gap and because the nut vibrates I had to put another nut under there to lock it down so I'll set the gap, well I'll set the drill bit for where it's supposed to be poking out bring the plate up against the bottom of the bit, set the gap, lock the nut down then I'll move this guy so it's just about to touch and then you just start cranking it in and you spin here real closely it's easy even with this being pretty solid you just touch this slightly and you can hear it grind so I'm just doing the sideways with the finger and you go, I'm going slow with it and it just takes it right down I don't know how long the wheel's going to last it doesn't even look like it's barely worn at all but uh, it's doing the job so I have a drill sharpener Anybody wants to buy the Drill Doctor, let me know. I'll sell it $50. I spend like $120 on it. eBay find a sign bar. <coughs> they wanted $65. I offered $45 and they accepted it. Because they figured nobody needs a sign bar, really. But I wanted it to play with because of Emma's spare room. See the trouble you caused me, Emma? $45 gone. Picture looked pretty good. I'm pretty sure though there's rust in the holes in the side. Well, let's see what it looks like here. Packaged well. Lots of padding. It weighs a lot too for being 5 inches. Wow, they really packaged this thing. Yo. <laughs> Throw that away. Unroll it in the box that was in the picture. Oh, jeez, and thanks a lot. <laughs> Caked it to death. Really? Is that just paper? I don't know. I need to get it open. Well, I'm surprised it's this heavy. Like, really? Use them. There's the box that was in the picture with a number on it. It's unknown who made it. There's the number. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, wow. That is really heavy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, there it is upside down, but I guess you just flip it out of the box. Bunk. Ooh, that better come off. That wasn't in the picture. Picture showed it being like perfect. Yeah, there's some of the rust. But wow, that is I think it's just junk from the box. 
on it. Not too bad, not too bad. Have to take it over the granite surface and hopefully this sucker's flat. <laughs> so I have a five inch sign bar. Just have to clean it up a little bit here. Alright, I hope this camera there's no reflection and it can see this needle. Moving my hand in here for lighting, so so let's check out the new sign bar here, see how flat it is or how unflat it is. And again, messing with tents, trying to measure it is ridiculous. Well, if you come up on it, see right there, it's reading almost three. If I tap on the table, does it stay put? I'm going to stand up and see it here. Yeah, see now it's on three. Now it's a half under, half a tenth. So, and if you come up on it real fast, boom, you're going to be there's a tenth under three. So you got to come up real slow until the needle settles. I think it's a half under three. That's what it consistently is. What is it going to do over here? That's a half over three. Tap on the table. That's a tenth over. Kind of wants to stay a tenth over. So that's a tenth and a half flat. Yeah, it's coming down almost three. And then it goes back up a half or a tenth. Oh, shit. Just messed everything up because I hit. Yeah, it's something shifted. That's interesting. It's like just hit bumping that. Oh, I guess it moved the arm. Uh, Everything is pretty tight. So this guy is nice and flat, it looks like. Really great here. It's a two and a half, two point six. Let me turn it around. So it looks like I have something pretty accurate here. To be able to, uh, I'm not going to move it over a little more for the camera. Yeah, there you go. Yep, 2.6. Yeah, it's moving almost two tenths there. Uh, six, seven, if I can get over that, yeah, that's about two tenths. So it hits well within spec. And that's interesting too, because it seems like everything that's precision. The best anybody can do is two tenths. Nobody can get it any tighter than that. But I know gauge blocks are real tight, so. Uh, Alright, so I have something that I can check um, angle blocks with. But then I went to one of the calculators online and said, okay, one degree, what do I need? Uh, don't have that angle block. Two degrees, don't have that. Three, four, don't have any of them. So great, I didn't do my homework and I've got a sign bar and I don't have the angle blocks to check anything with. Really. So I put it back in the box, threw it in the drawer, and then this morning I'm thinking, wait a minute, I have gauge pins. I can use those. I go from eleven thousandths to six hundred thousandths in thousandths increments. So let me set this guy up for a one degree angle block with a gauge pin. Alright, according to the website. One degree needs 87.3 thousandths. So, gauge pin, measuring it with a micrometer, this is 87.1. So, I'm 0.2 off. Stick it underneath there. All right, it's rolling all around, of course. All right, trying to stick it in at an angle. Oh, man, don't hit my thing. All right, so it's under there. And I'm rocking. Great. Why am I rocking? Uh, lift it up and put it in there straight. Now I'm rolling. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, put something next to it to keep it from moving. Maybe that's not a good thing to be putting on a granite surface, but it seems to be solid. Okay, one degree. Clean that up, that's clean. Stick it on there. Double check the camera that you can see it, yeah. 
And I gotta go way up here. Uh, yeah, push, push. More. There, that should be it now. Down a bit. Is that enough? Oh, right there, too. There we go, got a reading. Alright. So, where am I at? I'm bouncing all over. Let me tap the table here. Alright, so it's kind of settling in. Almost two tenths under four. Go from here. That's two tenths under four. And so it's two tenths off. No, three t almost three. Almost three. So that's not bad. That's not bad. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's moving further up now. That's uh, one, two, three over. And that's coming down. That's three under. Yeah, so that's quite a bit now off. Interesting how it's moving here. Go side to side. Ah, there we go. That's the problem. Is the angle is moving so if I try to stay in the middle it's moving just a few tenths so I don't know for cheap stuff here you know what $30 set not too bad not too bad so I can use gauge bins and just go through all of them and see where they're at